Hi there, I'm Dan Wallin, a cloud advocate at Microsoft. In this video, I'm going to share a quick tip with you on how to get started calling the Microsoft Graph API. Now, if you're new to Microsoft Graph, here's an official definition for you. Microsoft Graph provides a secure and unified API that can be used to access Microsoft 365 and other cloud data and intelligence. Now, in a nutshell, what that means is we as developers can retrieve information such as users' email, chats, files, meetings, to-do lists, tasks, and on and on and on, and pull that into apps where our users work every day. That means if I'm the user, I can log in, and I can see my list of meetings related to a particular topic listed right there in the app. Or if I have emails that are related to a particular topic, I can see my emails after logging in. Of course, this is all done in a very secured manner where the user has to approve it first off, has to give what's called consent, and then they can get to this type of data. And we as developers can pretty easily integrate this into our apps. So what I'm going to do is walk you through a quick application called the Microsoft Graph Explorer. And you can get to this at aka.ms slash GE. That's kind of the short URL. And let's jump on over to that and I'll show you how it works. So Microsoft Graph Explorer is a website you can go to to practice calling into Microsoft Graph APIs, but also see what Microsoft Graph APIs are actually available. So for example, you'll notice right up top, we have an area where we can define an API URL. Now Microsoft Graph is a RESTful API. And just so you're clear, it's not GraphDB or GraphQL or something like that. It's its own API for calling in to get Microsoft 365 data. So for example, I can call into the profile API and get the logged in user's profile. Now currently I'm not logged in, so what we're gonna get is some anonymous data back. You'll notice we get a display name for Megan Bowen. We also get some information about Megan's email address and some other info as well. And you can see that we're getting back JSON data, JavaScript object notation type data. Now in addition to that, I can come over to the left and I can actually do other queries. If we want to do this for Megan, which I'm going to do, we can leave it as is, but if you want to do it for yourself, you could either log in with your credentials, or better yet, you could log in with a developer tenant, something you can kind of play around with that isn't production data. Now, in this case, I'm going to come down to my photo, and notice that if I click on this, I get back Megan's photo. If I come up to the URL, we have me slash photo, and then dollar value. If I take off dollar value, then we're going to get back the JSON data. Notice that we have the height and the width and some other data as well. We put that back. We can, of course, get back to the JPEG in this case. And there we go. Now, moving on down, we can get to Megan's email. And I want to emphasize that you have to have a logged in user who's consented to give this information. So if I want to get mail, I'd have to log in first. And then if I approve it, you could actually pull my mail in, and maybe I'm working with a salesperson right now, and you wanna pull in sales-specific emails so that I can see what I've said before or in the past. Well, we can do that right here. And now I can get into the email. We can filter maybe based on subject, for example, maybe data within the body. We could also come in and get things like calendar events if we want it. So if I type calendar, then you'll notice I have my events for the next week, or I might just want to get all events. Maybe I want all upcoming events. You're going to notice up top that I can select specific properties. So if I only wanted the subject and the body and maybe the start and the end dates, let's just do that and we'll even take out location. Now notice when I run the query, that's all I get. There's one record or one event right there. Now I can also come in and add different types of filtering if I'd like. So I can type an ampersand here and I could say dollar filter equals. And these are different query parameters you can add. This uses OData, by the way. So if you've ever used OData, you'll be right at home. If you haven't, well, there you go, it's OData. So if we come on down, we could say, well, I wanna filter everything greater than maybe this date right here. So I could come in, copy that. And then I could say filter by start. That would get me to start right here. And then I want to go to date time. So I'd come in start slash date time greater than or equal to. 
And then in quotes, I'll go ahead and we'll paste in that date. Run it, and there we go. Now we have the same exact data, but now it's filtered. So now I could filter events based on a particular scenario. Maybe it's not filtered based on date time, it's filtered on the body or the subject, something like that. So I hope this has helped you out. Get started with Graph Explorer. Like and subscribe to the video so that you're notified about other videos that we do in the future on this channel.